right, so today, kind of late getting started with the breeding season, which is fine. Um, we just had so much going on. So what I want to talk about today is foal heat. So foal heat is when a mare has a foal, the mare normally uh, comes back into heat and ovulates by about day nine or 10. And so then everybody gets confused on what to do if we're gonna breed them on foal heat and if we're not. So I'm gonna to try to explain that to you today. So let's check her out and make sure she's still a breeder. She's a breeder yesterday. And so we decided we're gonna collect the stud today and breed her, so. That lube's crap. She's pushing, there we go. So that's the uterus, see all the edema? This is all uterus here and that's all edema. So the mare is pushing on me. So you don't ever wanna really push against the mare because you'll tear the uterus. That's all edema there, see that big follicle there? So it's about a 35 plus millimeter follicle. So we measure it that way. She was about the same yesterday. With the edema, she looks good. I take the other side, she just looks all right. All right, so she's a breeder today. All right, so here's here's why we say she's a breeder. I'm gonna explain this a little bit farther after we breed her. But she foaled on the 3rd of May, and it is, what's today, the 13th or 14th? 13th, 4th, 13th. So it's, it's critical that these mares on foal heat, they go past 10 days. Okay, I'll explain more why. All right, kick her out. Let's get her other mare in. If I, if I can, I don't want to use this mare to collect the stud because she got caught with her because it's just too dangerous. This is, a, this is one of the clones, one of the mares I cloned. So she lost her foal and then Ruby, you know, Ruby died and she actually raised Ruby's foal. Didn't nourish or anything, but she she took care of it. She was a 40 on the left side just yesterday, and I, I'm hoping she she held because I was wanting to. I was trying to make her. I was trying to stretch her till today because today is breeding day. Oh, she actually looks better today. Uterus got a lot more edema. See all that wagon wheel looking stuff? She got a little bit of fluid in there. That's all right. Looks a lot better today. Oh, look at that, 45 millimeter. That's a big, you don't see follicles that big. That's a big one, 45, maybe a 50. So she was a 40 yesterday, so I'm calling her, I called her a 40 yesterday. Look at that fluid, see this is fluid. See that black in the middle, that's fluid. I mean, it doesn't hurt us now because we're fixing the breeder. But, uh, but if, she, if we were gonna put an embryo, if she was an embryo mare, she'd be, we'd be in trouble. So she's gonna be great. So the edema, she's gonna be a good teasing mare too. The edema is the uterus, is, is the uh, <clears throat> estrogen. And, the, and when they come in the heat, the estrogen is what makes them come in the heat and you know, squat and piss and, and show. So with all that edema, cause she didn't have near, she had edema yesterday of, of two and I've got her today as a three. So, and she, that left follicle was a 40 yesterday and I've got her at a 45 today. So the, 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 the follicle grows about every, about five millimeters, about every day. And what the follicle is, inside the follicle is the oocyte. So the oocyte is what's called, is a female egg. And it builds up in that, in that follicle. And then that follicle will eventually bust. And it goes down into the oviduct. So what we want to do is we want to get her bred right now. Because she's fixing to ovulate. I'm telling you within six hours she's going to ovulate. Get her... The semen needs to be up in the oviduct, sitting there waiting for the oocyte to come down. Is that right? So we need to have the semen there. We want to have the semen there before she ovulates. So that's what we're going to do. This is the first collection of the year. Whatever, it's going to be a wreck, but we'll, it's part of it. Yep, put her in the box. Good. Did you move this? No. The same one. Last year, Mary kicked, kicked this back out. But she's gonna be, she's gonna be a good tease, Mary. All right, so we gotta get, we gotta get the AV going. 
It'll take a minute. Uh, let me get the AV going, then we'll bring the stallion in and start teasing. People look at me pretty funny when I go, like, what's on your shirt? Ah, it's a bunch of KY. Got a bunch of, I buy the, I buy the KY by the, by the case. All right, so we're gonna uh, lube up the inside of this AV. Um, I, got, I got a video out on collecting stallions and stuff. I'll put a link in it. It's probably, I don't know, it's probably got like a million views or a bunch. It always gets a bunch of views. Something about giving a horse a hand job to us or jacking off a freaking Harris. It's always like, gets a lot of views on YouTube. A bunch of sick suckers on YouTube, I guess. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just measuring the how tight I want it. I know that I know the stallion, and I and so you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. So I'm just pushing the water out to where I, I where I. I think he's going to like it because you can hurt it in the temperatures. So I've got a little gauge here for the temperature. And so I keep it just under 50 degrees Celsius, which is, so then once I'm done, I'll leave my glove in here just like that. And then that keeps everything clean in there. We're good to go. So now we're going to tease the stallion and then we'll collect him. But this video is not about collecting stallions. This is more about, I won't talk about foal heat. Should you marry, breed your marrow foal heat or not? Pissing, that's a good sign. That's what I was telling you on the estrogen. Her squatting and pissing, that's why I said, she, you know, she had her edema or estrogen levels are so high. That's what's making her be in heat. That's what's making her a good tease, Mary. Good. All the crap he's getting me so I can go give him a get, let him get his rocks off. We need to get the water out of these AVs pretty quick because it's too hot for the semen. But the semen, most of the semen is already down here. But, uh, about 35 mils. That's pretty good. So if he jump, you know, if he mounts multiple times, then you get you don't get any more sperm cells, you just get more. Uh, Simulum fluid and it just dilutes it, so that's not necessarily good. So, as usual, like I've told you a hundred times, we'll always start on the inside, then work your way out. Always squirt the, per the first part out in the, in the trash. I'm gonna go in vaginally, and I'm gonna pick the cervix up. So I start in, cup this in my hand, protect the tip of it. Go up, up and down. Watch you know, get pissed on right here. So I got the cervix in my hand, and I just essentially start to pop it down into the cervix. Cervix is super relaxed. 
So that's a good sign. That's a sign of all the estrogen in there. Okay. We're pretty much in there. So now, now all I've got is I've got the pop I got the pipette down in the cervix and I'm pinching the cervix off around the pipette. And I'm just slowly introducing the semen to it. And I pulled that air pocket up. I pulled up, left an air pocket up here, and that's what clears the straw out. So then I pinch the cervix off, pull the pipette out, and we're good. And always use these, always use these syringes without the rubber. You don't want the rubber plunger. The rubber plunger's hard as shit on semen. And then I normally just kind of pinch the cervix off, just kind of hold it a minute, give it a little wiggle. And then come out real slow so you don't, you don't want to suck a, a bunch of air back in there. Okay, so one down. All right, now, get the tail done here. So, so now we'll check her back um, in two days, make sure she ovulated. Which we, I promise you, don't she will ovulate. All right, no shot, we already gave her a shot yesterday. So we gave her a shot of, we knew she was gonna be a breeder today. So we gave her a shot yesterday to make her ovulate. And and what that does is you give her that shot and like 30 hours later, she'll ovulate. So 24, we're at 24 hours right now. So we give, her, we give her, we put some semen in there. The semen's fresh, she ovulates sometime this afternoon. Red horse. Main reason this whole video is about fall heat. Should I mar should I breed my mare on fall heat or not? And I'm gonna explain it once we get this mare bred. Easy day. So we're breeding this mare here. So this is her foal heat. So she fought, she had this foal 10 days ago. And this is what we're gonna talk about. Should I, should I breed my mare on foal heat or not? And I'm gonna explain to you as soon as I get a bread what, why and why not. Cause I've got another mare out there that we decided not to breed on foal heat. So I'm going through the cervix now. Slow air bubble at the top, at the back. Got the cervix pinched off. Nice and slow. Semen's fragile, so everything you want to do with the semen is slow and easy. Hold the cervix down. So I'm, I only put 20, 20 mils of, of semen in there, which most of it was raw semen. I didn't wait, I didn't dump, like I don't just dump semen down the freaking drain. It's like, if we got it, we're gonna use it. So we have way more than enough semen today, but. Well, let's just leave her here for a minute. Let's talk about what, so let's talk about why, why I decided to skip one mare on full heat and why I decided to breed this mare on full heat. Here's the, here's the secret and here's what I've, my rule of thumb and it's just mine. Other people have other ideals and other, you know, nothing is set in stone. Because these, you gotta remember, a mare is not a machine. It's a, it's an animal. But down the line, your best results are going to be is the embryo doesn't reach the uterus till day 15. Day 15, the uterus is healed up as good as it's going to get, or not as good as it's going to get, good enough to to maintain an embryo. <clears throat> so let's talk about what's happening, okay? To get to 15. Let's keep the numbers simple and the, and and the, everything else simple. Okay. So imagine. Imagine my body is the uterus, okay? Imagine my arms are the oviduct. Imagine my hands are the ovaries, okay? So she just had a foal. We're 10 days later. We got a big follicle over here on the right, a big follicle. Now, if she ovulates before day 10, so day nine, like that other mare ovulated on day nine, well then it would be day 14 or 13 when the, when the embryo got down to the uterus. That's a no-go, so, so we're gonna do something different with her. This mare here is at day 10 today. She hasn't ovulated yet. She's going to ovulate sometime today. That means this follicle is going to release the oocyte. The oocyte is the female egg. 
the semen we just bred her. So the semen is already on its way through the uterus up the oviduct, okay? The semen's gonna be sitting up here waiting on this oocyte. This oocyte's gonna go into, gonna be caught by the fimbria and caught, and then go down into the oviduct, okay? And get fertilized, it's gonna get fertilized up here, okay? Up here in the oviduct. Not in the uterus, in the oviduct. Well, we're at day 10 right now. It takes five days to go from here to here. So then we're gonna be at day 15 by the time this embryo makes it all the way down through this oviduct and to the uterus. And that puts us at day 15. At day 15, we believe the uterus is good enough to support an embryo. So at day 15, the embryo is gonna be floating around. And then a couple days after that, or about five days after that, six days, then the embryo will attach to the, to the uterine wall and tell the mare that, hey, keep this CL up here, we're pregnant, stay pregnant, okay? Now, the mare that I didn't breed, she ovulated, what I say, at day nine? Day nine, ovulation, sometime at day nine. Well, if we'd bred her at day eight, see him being up here, come here at day nine, it come down here and the embryo would arrive in the uterus at day 13, day 14. That's, we don't believe that's enough time. So we're not, so your pregnancy rate goes way down, way down at that point. Now I'm not saying you can't get pregnant, I'm just saying it's going way down. So what I do is I choose to say, okay, let her ovulate, let her go through her cycle. A week after she's, she's ovulated, then I'm going to go and give her a shot of prostaglandin, which is going to knock the CL out. In six days, she'll be a breeder again. So I lose a week by not breeding her, uh, but but if I did breed her and she come up not pregnant, well then I'd be 30 days out, okay? So what I'm saying is I'm saying, okay, I don't think she, I think my odds of her getting her pregnant when she's, when she's only 14, uh, 13, 14 days out is not good enough. So I'm gonna let her ovulate, let her go through her cycle, give her a week, give her a shot of prostaglandin, bring her back in the heat. So we're gonna short cycle her is what we're doing. Short cycle her back in and then we'll breed her in a week. So then we essentially, only lose about a week and a half or two weeks there. And that's that's how you decide if you're gonna breed on full heat. It's all about is when is the mare gonna ovulate? Is she gonna ovulate on day nine, day 10, or day 11? If she's anything less than day 10, for me, it's a no-go. We let her go, we short cycle her. But this mare here, she's holding on to that follicle. She looks great. I bet we'll be successful. All right, that's all I got for today. I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will see y'all next week. Bye. Uh -huh.